and hello my dear students i am dr lata rani i am associate professor and program anchor of banking financial service and insurance department at delhi skill and entrepreneurship university today i am going to cover an important topic of business law that is bcoc 133 and the name of the topic is capacity of parties now when we talk of who is competent enough to enter into the contract as per the indian contract act 1872 we have to adhere different provisions clauses and amendments under the sections when i speak the word capacity it means that the person or institute or group of persons are capable to enter into a legal contract now you must be seeing the slide which is there in front of you so here there are many happy faces but one face is quite sad or you can say the person is not very happy others are joyful now when we talk of our business and its growth contracts are very very important contract is visible in every sense of life so when we talk of the people who are joyful who are looking as happy they are those who are eligible to enter into contract and the one which is having sad face is those that is he or she is not able to enter into the contract how we are going to decide the ability of a person to enter into a contract so my lecture is going to cover these things in detail with a minute provisions discussion as well as the case studies as examples so capacity of parties is defined as the person or the group of people who are competent who are eligible to enter into the contract and the one who are not eligible by the law they will not be able to create a contract and if they create the contract then in that case that contract is considered as invalid contract so you must have understood what is valid contract and what is invalid contract valid contract which is approved by the law where parties have a right to sue and to be sued whereas if we are creating a contract by breaking or violating the provisions of the law in that case we are not liable to be sued or suing the others so the risk the loss is there in terms of contract compensation now in order to understand it in a detailed manner let us move ahead what does capacity of party mean capacity of party means or it refers to each party who is going to enter into a contract so that capacity is actually reflecting the ability part of the parties competence part of the parties skill part of the parties and thereby making it as capacity lawfully we uh, we are considering competence so ability plus competence plus skill is equal to capacity so when we say ability it means the person who is entering into a contract with the another person with another firm with another company they are able to perform those duties they are able to perform those obligations so this is what ability is so if i am going to a bakery shop i am expecting a pastry from the shopkeeper ability is that that person is able to provide me pastry so my offer for the pastry and his acceptance for giving me the pastry 
is part of ability. I hope ability is clear. So ability is something which is under my purview. So if I am going to a bakery shop and I am asking rice from the shopkeeper, then my offer in terms of proposal will not stand valid because bakery shop will not be able to provide me rice. Generally, he or she is supposed to provide bakery items. So this is what ability. So ability is what is being able to have consideration. Second I have spoken is that is competence. So both parties who are entering into a contract must be competent enough to make a contract valid. So competency is generally a term which is used in KPOs. Now business is either run as business process outsourcing, BPOs or KPOs knowledge process outsourcing. So knowledge process outsourcing requires competence. So if you are going to a doctor to consult him or her with your for your disease, doctor may be competent to understand your disease. He or she may be able to deliver the solution of that disease. So competence is that is your background in terms of your qualification. Third I have spoken is skill set. Skill is something that you are practicing it. So capacity is equal to ability plus competence plus skill set. So when these three components are present in a contract, then those contracts are valid as per Indian Contract Act. 1872. So each is required by law to have mental and intellectual capacity so that persons must be able to understand the terms, the conditions, the clauses, the fulfillment of the contract so that they can make a right decision whether to enter into the contract or not to enter into the contract. So these people are very much eligible as per the law. So those who are possessing the skill set in terms of mental capacity as well as intellectual capacity. So if I am going to uh, let's say Tamil Nadu and I am creating a contract either in Hindi, right? So they will not be able to understand this. So what is the mental capacity? that I need to create a contract with Tamilian either in his or her original language that is Tamil or English as a standard language. Intellectual is that is the way you want to deal or express or offer or propose a particular thing to the acceptor he or she should understand in the same manner. Therefore. When we consider who are not eligible, they are minor or those who have reduced mental acuity or people who are under the influence of drugs, alcohol, they will not be able to enter into a contract as per the Contract Act 1872. So what does capacity of party mean? Capacity means the ability to create a contract the competence to perform a contract and the skill set required to oblige the contract, complete the contract. So I believe capacity word is clear to you. So in a layman jargon to a legal jargon, I have made it very simplified that capacity is equal to your ability plus competence plus skill set. Next, now we have to see what our Indian Contract Act says. As per Indian Contract Act 1872 in the section 11 says every person is competent to contract who is 
the age of majority according to the law to which he is subject and who is of sound mind and is not disqualified from contracting by any law to which he is a subject. Let us understand this definition in detail. When I say this definition, I just wanted to emphasize on three parts. First, who is having the age of majority? So, age of majority is the first parameter to decide the capacity of parties. So, age of majority has been defined by the law, right? Second very important, who is of sound mind. Sound mind means soundness of the mind is that the person is able to understand the purpose of contract, the nature of contract, the object of contract and pertaining provisions, clauses, terms and directives. That is where soundness comes. So, soundness is equal to your mental quality as well as intellectual quality. So, when we say MQ, mental quotient and IQ, intellectual quotient, that makes a sound mind. So, what if, if person is not of a sound mind at the time of creating a contract, but later on he is of sound mind, then will that contract be valid? No, not at all. So, when you are entering into a contract, you need to check it out, the soundness of mind. Let's say a person is taking some treatment in terms of uh, any anxiety, any phobia, any depression and he is taking some sort of medicines and he is under the observation of psychologist. So, at that time, if he creates a contract, then in that case, that contract will not be considered as valid. Third thing is, he must not be disqualified from contracting either by Indian Contract Act 1872 or by any law. Any law means Indian Partnership Act, Sales of Goods Act. So, any law that is prevalent in India, he should not be debarred from entering into contract. Now, moving into a detail, let's say there was a director of the company and some sort of civil case or criminal case is going against that director. He has published some false information in the prospectus and now he is under the proceedings of IPC, Indian Penal Code. In that case, that director till the time the judgment does not come, will not be able to enter into any contract. He is disqualified from contracting by the law. So, how you are going to understand section 11? Again, divided into three parts. Number one, age of majority. Number two, soundness of mind. And number three, the bar part from other law, from other act. Right? Now, what is age of majority? Very, very important. When we say age of majority, it is defined as under the section 3 of Indian Majority Act 1875. Every person who is citizen of India attains the majority the moment completes his 18 years of age. Like we are eligible to vote once we attain the age of majority. So, you could understand age of majority is when a person attains the age of 18 years. But there are two exceptions to this rule. What are those exceptions? If any child who has lost his parents and is under the guardianship of any court, maybe district court, maybe high court, maybe supreme court, under that clause, his age of majority will be treated as 21 years, not 18. 
So this is number one. So, uh, otherwise, if it is a normal case where the guardianship is not there, then in that case, person attains the age of majority the moment he, uh, he or she is of 18 years of age. So that is where the rule of 18 years apply. Where rule of 21 years apply? It is number one when the child has lost his parents, her parents and the property and the custodian is either the court. In that case, the age of 21 rule will apply. So at that case, he will not be a major even if he or she attains 18 years. They have to complete their 21 years of age to attain the age of majority, right? Who can enter into a contract? Again, very, very important from the definition we have understood that those people who are attaining the age of majority, number one, who have sound mind, number two, and who can contract because they are qualified under the contracting law. They are not debarred by the law. They are the ones who have been allowed to enter into the contract. So as such, these three set of people can enter into a contract and these contracts will be treated as valid contract. So capacity of the party in terms of age of majority, in terms of soundness of mind and in terms of qualification by the law, they are eligible, right? These people like they are the prerequisites of each of the contract. Now, many of you must have a question, what if if person is of sound mind and not cross the majority age? Will that person be eligible to enter into a contract? No. All these three conditions must be fulfilled to enter into a contract, to make a contract valid. Right? So, these people are eligible to enter into a contract. What if, if any of the condition is not fulfilled? In that case, they are not treated as part to enter into a contract. So, all these three conditions must be fully adhered, complied and satisfied of. That means age of majority is the first prerequisite and soundness of mind is the second prerequisite and third, the people, those people will not be debarred from entering into the contract. All these three conditions must be fulfilled to make a contract valid. What if, if any of the condition is not fulfilled, then the contract will automatically be void, voidable, invalid. Now first we are going to understand whether minor can enter into a contract. Who is a minor? So when we talk of minor, minor is treated as infant in the eyes of law. Like I mentioned under section 3 of Indian Majority Act 1875, the person who attains the age of majority, who attains the age as 18 is treated as major and the person who has not attained the age of majority is treated as minor. So minor is a one who has not completed his or her 18 years of age. So with those people who are less than 18 years of age will be considered as infant or minor. Now, you must be relating it to this. There are different channels who are promoting different kind of skill set, talent of minors. For example, we, we have witnessed different dance shows, different singing shows that are li live telecast on different channels. So whether channel is creating a contract with a minor to perform or to say him 
to perform on the stage no they have been created a contract with the minor under the able guidance of their parents so as such channel and parents have a contract whereby minor is performing so those contracts are valid if any minor is entering into a contract without the guarantee part of their parents guardian or legal heirs in all these cases the contract with the minor is not valid so who is a minor in the eyes of law minor is a person who has not attained the age of 18 years now again we are going to discuss position of a minor any person who has not attained the age of majority is a minor so when i say this i mean to say either the person who is not the age of 18 years cannot enter into a contract so that contract is void ab initio void ab initio means the contract is null and invalid from the beginning so no one can sue to the minor to for the compensation for the loss for the sufferings for the necessities so those kinds of contract when you are creating with a minor just with a minor then those contracts are void ab initio that means that contract is null from the beginning now state provides that the minor with civil and criminal immunities in addition to this it takes the custody of well being and property of the minor these immunities do not let the minor to enter into a contract so if minor enters into a contract knowing his incapability then such contract shall work independently of any contract that means if any minor says that he or she is a major and the person who is entering into a contract does not check the date of birth does not take the proof of this then minor has shown himself or herself as major still he will be treated as minor so those kinds of contract are at the risk of the person who is entering into a contract with the minor minors agreement you need to understand and i would be briefing out these points in details also but again when you are creating a contract with minor it is void it is completely void that means no one can make the contract valid or voidable you know we have three sets of contract valid contract void contract voidable contract so you all must know that valid contract is the one who is created as per section 10 of indian contract act 1872 that means the contract is valid as that is fulfilling all those requirements void contract is that has no value that has no base that has no compensation factor that has no suing rights you cannot challenge the minor in the court you cannot knock the door of the court for the compensation agreement with minor is completely void third set of contract is voidable voidable contract is the contract which may be valid or void at the option of a grieved party that means if something party wants to challenge then it is void otherwise it is valid so if in any chain snatching incidents if there was a lady who is going on a walk chain has been snatched by the snatchers in that case if lady reports for such incidents then the contract is void otherwise if she keeps mum if she does not speak up contract will be treated as valid so agreement with minor is a void second minor can be a beneficiary 
like I gave you the example of different channels promoting minors talent singing dancing right so they are receiving the reward they are being paid some amount so in terms of their talent they are getting the benefits that contract is valid minor can be a promisee or a beneficiary so he or she can receive the rewards compensations benefits third is his agreement cannot be ratified by him on attaining the age of majority very very important now in order to understand this point i will be giving you one example let's say my son is 17 years and 9 months he is going to be 18 after 3 months so he has created a contract with a channel on the assumption that i am major right he has shown himself as major but there are three more months left when in that case so the period which is three months left will not be ratified the moment he attains the age of majority so old contract created with a minor cannot be converted into the same contract even if person attains the age of majority right so if somebody says i am major i am going to be major in days to come in months to come the old contract will be void yes the new contract which is created between two parties at the age of majority is valid so even if there is a difference of few days to few some months the contract will remain void it will not be converted at the age of majority. No. Void contract created during the age of minor will remain the age of this. That will not be created at the age of majority. So, this is something where minor contract will remain void and that can never be valid even if the person attains the age of majority. I hope this point is clear. So, contract created with a minor is always, always void, is always void ab initio. Void ab initio cannot be ratified, cannot be corrected as valid even if person attains the age of majority, right? Minor can't ask for compensation. No, you cannot challenge any minor for the compensation. You cannot ask for the compensation from him. He is not the one who will pay you. Yes, minor as a partner for benefits is right contract, is valid contract. So, you need to understand if minor is at the receiving end, either in terms of promise, beneficiary, compensation, rewards, then those contracts are valid. If minor is at the paying capacity, paying end, no, these contracts are void. So, law is very, very, uh, very, very valid from the angle of minor. Minor has been given these rights. He can be an agent. So, but when you create any agreement with the minor, it is void. He can be an agent in terms of receiving the commission, in terms of receiving the salary from the principal, but he is not a partner or agent or promisor for the compensation. He is always, always there with the benefits angle. He can be agent, he can be promisee, he can be beneficiary just for the receiving end. So, when it comes to make the payment by the minor, all those contracts are void ab initio. That means they are not valid, right? This is the minor's agreement. So, we have discussed the position of minor in terms of creating a contract. Now, I would like to conclude my session. 
that we have understood what is capacity that is capacity is equal to like you guys are familiar with the formulas it is ability plus competence plus skill so we have understood capacity in a detailed manner then who are capable to enter into a contract all those three people the one who have attained the age of majority the two who have sound mind and the third who are capable who are competent to enter into a contract or otherwise you can understand who are not debarred by any law from entering into a contract so capacity we have understood who can enter into a contract we have understood who cannot enter into a contract it is implied any contract with a minor is not valid any contract created with unsound mind is not valid any contract entered into by debarred person who are disqualified to enter into a contract are not valid we have understood who is minor we have understood the nature of minors agreement with this i end up my session in terms of this contract that is position of minor thank you Thank you.